Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor Study. Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. Do you know what mammon is? The New Testament was written in Greek, but now and then an Aramaic word pops in, and Jesus spoke Aramaic. Mammon simply means wealth. And if you try to be a Christian and serve wealth and serve Jesus at the same time, it doesn't work. You can't do it. So I thought we'd bring in somebody who has done some preaching and thinking on this, and I want to introduce to you Pastor Mark Henry. Welcome, Mark. My friend, it's good to be with you. Good to be with you. Mark is the senior pastor of uh, Revive Church in Brooklyn Park. He is a really good preacher. I visited there, and you don't go to sleep when this guy preaches. So Mark is going to talk to us because you've done a series on biblical sense, makes sense, uh, whatever. And so, Mark, yeah. before we get into this, though, I always like to ask our guests, how did you become a Christian? Yeah, you know, my dad committed suicide when I was five years old. Wow. And my mom remarried. He adopted us. He had an affair, left us. My mom couldn't care for me. I went and lived with my grandparents. By the time I got into my teen years, I thought, you know, you're better off killing yourself than to live with all the pain and sorrow in this life. And, 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 and by the grace of God, she ended up sending me to a Christian school. It was the first time I saw a husband love his wife, a wife love her husband, a couple love their children. And I thought, wow, I, I need what they've got. But, you know, people run scams. And so I watched for 175 days. The two things I noticed about them, they talked like Jesus was a real person, that Jesus had radically changed their life. And they would say things like, you know, the Lord is showing me, or the Lord showed me today as I was reading the Bible, different things. And then the second thing was the Bible answering their questions. And after 175 days of watching, I said, I need that Jesus. I trusted Jesus alone to pay for my sins. And he radically transformed my life. And ever since then, I've been trying to let people know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. How, how old were you when that happened? Uh, I was just going into my teen years. I was uh, like 12. And you're married. How many years have you been married? Uh, 30, 38 years. Yeah. And that says to me, you can come from a really broken marriage yeah. and end up with a great family. Well, you know, I ended up trusting Christ. They're going into those teen years. And I thought in that Christian school, I need to pick out one of these girls that doesn't have all the baggage. So the last day of eighth grade, now don't try this. I tell people, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional. Yeah. But um, I picked this one girl, her mom taught at the school. Uh, her dad was one of the deacons there at the, at the church and highly esteemed. And I said, I'm gonna marry into that family. So last day of eighth grade, I gave her a diamond ring and said, I'm gonna marry you. It took five years to close the deal. But you know, hey, how, how old God. were you when you got married? Uh, I was a month before my 19th birthday. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And we'll see again. If somebody came from a broken marriage, that doesn't mean you have to have one. No. Come to Christ. Let Him do this kind of thing. Jesus can revive our hearts in salvation, and Jesus can revive marriages. He can revive relationships. He's He's about taking broken things and making them new. Absolutely. Right? And you're a living you're a living proof of that, Mark. It, it's the of course, power. So of, right. <laughs> we all we all are. Right. But you know, that that's a great story. Well, but everyone's got a story of brokenness. Yeah, yeah. You've got a little different story than I've got. Yeah. But, but what we attest to is the power of the gospel, the power of Christ in you, yep. and likewise here. Yeah, good job. Well, that's good. All right. Now we got to talk about money. Yeah. All right. So you've done all this teaching and preaching on money. So I thought I would just, you know, for people that wonder, does God expect me to tithe? What am I supposed to do? Uh, you know, do I have to give? Because I don't, I'm not happy about it. God says, I love a cheerful. So let me just throw questions at you. Okay, let's okay. do it. Question number one, um, you say that we're supposed to be content and not worry. But what do you do if you got all these? I mean, how, is, how can you get to the point if you had bills especially where you're content and you're not worrying about money? Explain that to me. Yeah, so there's, there's a couple of times in the New Testament where it talks about us learning contentment. Philippians chapter 4, Paul says, I've learned the secret of being content whether I have much or I have little. Philippians 4, very important passage. In fact, most people know the famous passage, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is in the context of money and whether or not I have contentment or not. So, uh, you know, Tom, I would say it's, it's a complicated thing in the sense of sometimes we've made a whole bunch of bad decisions. I, I have, you know, there's a proverb that says, if you borrow, you're gonna become a slave. 
to the lender. So if I have all of these credit card debts and so forth and so on, and they've accumulated, and then I'm saying like, oh, how can I be content? Sometimes we've dug the hole pretty deep. So it depends on where we're at in that whole process. But the bottom line is this, is that God is the provider of all of our needs. Uh, he loves us. He cares about us. And wherever we're at, we need to start right there and say, God, yeah. I need to learn contentment good, right good. here where I'm at. Good. And then let's move forward. Well, I like your point. I like to live simply. It's easy. Yeah. I had, a, I had an old man in our church called Olaf. We called him St. Olaf. He had a cabin up north. Some arson got in and burned his cabin to the ground. Yeah. Olaf's response, best day of my life. Yeah. He got so tired of driving up there, mowing the lawn, fixing the windows. And I think the reason we've got anxiety is because we live too big. If we just Absolutely. simplify it. All right, I'm going to ask you another question. And I'm, I want to hear your answer to see if you agree with me. <laughs> Pastor Henry, what do you say to people who say, is a Christian required to tithe? That means give 10% of your income to the Lord. What do you say to that one? You know, it's actually one of the most, uh, when, when people, a lot of times people will call and say, I just, I don't go to your church, but I have to ask this question. I mean, it is a common question. Yeah. And here's the bottom line. What... All of us struggle with idolatry. And there's an interesting verse, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. It says, greed is idolatry. Mm -hmm. There's a dependent clause there describing, modifying the word greed. And Jesus you know, said it really clear in Matthew 6, 47. You cannot serve God in mammon. So there's, there's something within our hearts. And so none of us like to give. But what giving does, there's a number of things that giving does. We should give joyfully. Uh, God loves a joyful giver. But in Philippians chapter 4, it says it's an act of worship. It says it's a fragrant aroma, well-pleasing to God. So if you've trusted in Jesus and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you read through the scriptures and you say, God, I want to honor you. I want to worship you. Well, part of that act of worship is giving. And then you, you keep on reading. That's, that's Philippians 4.18. Um, it becomes a priority uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, where Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And God's going to take care of a lot of these other things you're worried about right yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. Um, Another word, it, another passage in Matthew chapter 6, it talks about how when we give now, it leads to rewards in heaven. Jesus said, store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Yep. And so, Jerry and I, uh, ap right after I trusted Christ. That's his was, wife. Uh, yeah, that's my <laughs> wife. That's right. Uh, before Jerry and I were even married, I trusted Christ. And that was one of the things. My, well, my family is fairly su successful in the business world. And I was like, man, I don't want to worship money. I don't want to live for money. I want to live for Jesus. How do I get this right? And giving's part of that. And I want to store up treasures in heaven. So I even had these, I had my own little business and I would go mow lawns and everything. And I would, I would tithe off of that before we got Again, married. that's giving 10% of whatever you earn. Yes. Yeah. Now, 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 Jerry and I have done that for years. We've always done that. Why we love Jesus. And then we give beyond that to specific missionary endeavors, things that we Good. love. Good. So I, I, would just in, I would just encourage it. You can't. If you want the blessing of God in your life, yep. you need to honor yep. God. And, 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 and do you agree with this one? I used to have a guy, well, the old, New, Te New Testament doesn't retire require anything. That's an Old Testament concept. And he's right yep. in a sense. In a sense. And, and, and it, uh, nowhere in the New Testament does it say you have to tithe. Right. And the New, that's in the Old Testament. And yeah. the, the Jews did have to. In the New Testament, it's give as you prosper. For some people, it's going to be 30% they're given, not 10%. And, yeah. But here's what I used to say to him. The Old Testament Jews knew this much about the love of God, and they tithed. Since the crucifixion, we know this much about the love of God. Will we be moved to give more or less than an Old Testament Jew? Yeah. So, I mean, my thought is, okay, it's not the, a New Testament law, but it's, I think 10% is a minimum. Absolutely. That's yeah. what I tell people all the time. Yeah. It's a starting spot. Yeah. 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 But I don't want to lay a law down. No. But, um, okay, good. Uh, another question. And can, um, I, can I just yeah, add one thought to that? You bet. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 7, it talks about when we come together, let each man, let each couple sacrifice, plan. Giving should be regular. It should be sacrificial. It should be intentional. Absolutely. It's an act of worship. Absolutely. It's all described in that passage. Yep. That's what we've applied. That's what our children have applied. Yep. And I'm telling you, it's the path of blessing. And I, I do what you do. 10% of my income goes right to the Lord. I don't even think about it. It just yep. goes there. Exactly. But then I've got the more than 10% called your offerings, if you yep. will. And I love to give to uh, this mission in India or this uh, work for Christians who are being persecuted in Iran, you know, this kind of stuff. 
And that's even more fun than the 10%. I don't know about you, I give my 10% to my local church. That's exactly what I do. Yeah. And the reason is my local church, the local church is what God, it's the economy, the economy that we live in, the age yeah. in which we live in. And so we give to our, our, our local church, we always have. And you know, every time I give to our local church, there's this whole budget and it's broken out. It's some of us going to youth groups, some of us going to taking care of our seniors, some of us going to benevolence in our community, some of it's going to printing Bibles that are going to Iran and other parts of the world. Some of it's going to um, uh, evangelizing in, in, in Africa and our and church. I love this. I, it's, it's, it's a fun, that's fun to give to that. <laughs> it is, it's like a mutual fund and yeah. you get all of yeah. these things that we're investing yeah. in heaven. Good. Now, I've heard you preach enough that I think probably you're also not a fan of what's called the prosperity gospel. Can you explain to us what that is and why Pastor John Piper says, quote, I hate the prosperity gospel. Can you explain what this is? Yeah, the prosperity gospel is... is these, are, these are TV evangelists that are doing this. Go ahead. Right. We're, we're Which doing, I'm not. Okay. You are not. I'm not one of those guys. But Thank go, you. Go ahead. Tell us what, you, what it is. Thank you. Really, it's a, it's a form of manipulating of God. It's like... God, I'm going to do this and you owe me. Listen, friends, God, God, friends, God doesn't owe us anything. Amen. Everything we get is by his grace. And out of love and devotion and an act of worship we give. It's not manipulating God. You know, having preached a lot in Africa, we've helped start 200 churches in East Africa. And it's amazing. These, these, these TV evangelists and stuff will fly in in their Lear jets. They'll rent these big arenas and they'll tell people, if, if you'll come and you'll give me money, then God's going to bless you and you're going to be rich. You're going to be rich and healthy and prosper and never have any problems. Friends, that prosperity gospel is absolutely evil. It's I, evil. I, I it's warn evil. people. Yeah. And there's, people, there's churches like that in this city. I know. I could name them. Yeah. I won't. But yeah. yeah. And there are people like that on TV. TV evangelists. I could name them. Absolutely. But if you send me money, I prayed over this cloth. We're going to send you this cloth. You're going to be healed of your cancer. My faith will go into the cloth. Get out of here. Exactly. And people give these people money. I, 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 I know it, and my, right. my heart grieves because they are hucksters. Yeah. Huckstering the word of God out of their own conceit. If, if we had time, we'd read 1 Timothy chapter 6. It warns about false teachers perverting the Bible to manipulate God's people Amen. for their own Amen. selfish desires for money. Okay. So, yeah. so somebody's watching this and they want to start giving 10%. Well, we're telling them, do that to your church. But yeah. then if, if you can give more than 10%, give that to well, well, I will also say this. Find a good church. Don't, don't fund the devil, oh. for heaven's sakes. Right? You and I know. That is part of this whole ministry. I'm trying to get people out of denominations like the ELCA Lutherans, the PCUSA Presbyterians, the United Church of Christ, the United Methodists, the Episcopalians, Churches which pay for abortions with offering dollars. Exactly. Churches which have transgender and practicing homosexual pastors. I could go on and on. That's a whole other show. But you're right. Get a church where you can joyfully give your money. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, because we're storing up treasures in heaven. We don't want to be storing up treasures in hell. No. We want to store up treasures in heaven. Absolutely. And I regularize there's, that, I'm saying a little figuratively, but if these assets, if we understand the Bible that all of the assets we have are God's and we're supposed to manage them for his glory, the average American will have somewhere between two and four million dollars in their lifetime to manage. Mm. They have to do it well. We're gonna, we're gonna stand before Jesus, give an account for our deeds, our words, our actions, as followers of Jesus. We want, to, we want the reward for that. So do it wisely, do it godly, but invest in godly all advancements. Right. So make sure you're going to a biblical church. Preach it. And, and where your church supports world missions, where your church preaches scripture, they support pro-life centers and not abortion clinics. You know, Amen. make sure you're going to a good church. But then here's the next question for you. I get this. How do I know what groups are good to give money to? I mean, how do I know I'm not giving it to a shyster group that you're giving it for an orphanage in Peru, but it's really going to, to fund the guy's jet? How do you figure that out? You know, it's complicated, but the, the, the most important thing we do is at a local church level, being there, seeing, do they, does they, they have a high view of Scripture? Do they love the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, I always tell people there's, there's five major things that you start with when we have a discussion. Do they believe in the authority of Scripture or the authority of man? Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, yep. or, you know, yep. my political party says, or yep. the world says, or culture says. Stick yep. with the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Sola Scriptura. And, and then, and then the, the deity of Christ. The Trinity, yeah. yeah. And, and then the, uh, the, virgin, the virgin birth, because if, that, if you believe that miracle, then the rest of the miracles right. of the Bible are easy, yep. except. 
Um, and then uh, substitutionary death, bodily Eight, resurrection, amen. and justification by faith alone. By grace through faith alone. And man, you get those five yeah. right, and we got a yeah, lot of things else. on the same and, page. You and know? so uh, <clears throat> I think I'm, I want to name my favorite charities. Yeah. And, and yeah. I want you to name yours. But okay. here's, I, I've had Dave Gibson on this show, who's a mission pastor in, yeah. in Minneapolis. And I said, Dave, I want my money to go right to the salvation of the lost. Yeah. Can you recommend some places? And he recommended a wonderful ministry called the Timothy Initiative that's starting churches in places where you don't start churches like Muslim areas oh, yeah. and, and other stuff. There's another group called Reaching Unreached Nations. Uh, I love to give to what's called International Christian Concern. It's very similar to Voice of the Martyrs that helps Christians overseas. And so if you've, there's something also, and it's kind of secular, but there's something called charitynavigators.org or com, where they will tell you if this group's above or, and, or, it's not a conservative Christian group, but they're pretty good at telling you, yeah, this guy's a shyster, this guy isn't. Yeah. <laughs> where do you like giving money? Well, we, we coined a phrase, a friend of mine coined a phrase, it's called going global, where local churches Glo go global. Mm -hmm. And so we like really target down and, and make it part of our DNA. So like one of my preaching team pastors uh, at, at our church is in Nigeria. He spends a good portion of the year in Nigeria. Um, we're starting schools in Nigeria. Uh, Muslim kids are coming. They're trusting Christ. We just had a hundred kids in the last two weeks trust Christ. The vast majority of them are Muslim and, families. And what is this ministry called? You know, or all I want to say it because Oh, because it's trouble, some area? Yeah, because okay. you can get yourself killed. I got you. Okay. So I would just say when you support a, a, a strong local church, they're going to have connections like that. Yeah. Um, you know, right here in the Twin Cities, um, the Crystal, Crystal Women's Center, yes. uh, we support them. We're like one of the, 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 the largest churches that support them. And that's kind of new? Or has it been oh around? no, no, it's been around for well, a long time. Well, Robinsdale Women's Center. That's that's, that's an offshoot of that. Oh, okay, gotcha. They've just moved. They got a new building. Gotcha. gotcha. And uh, so that's Peg a great, great ministry. Oh, Peggy, she goes to our church. We love her. Oh, we sure. love we uh, some of yeah. the other staff members. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that's all new. They've all come to the church just recently, but they are a great ministry. We're rescuing, yeah. uh, you know, two hundred kids a year. Uh, unborn children. Unborn children. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you're especially if you're a leader in your church, every church should have missionaries they support. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely crucial. Sometimes you go to a church and they're, they're hoping to get the light bills paid to yeah. turn on the light, but maybe the light bills pay, are not getting paid because you're not supporting world missions. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you gotta have your priorities right and you yeah. gotta get your house in order, but the question is how, how are you reaching out? And, and uh, you know, that, that's why it's important to be in a good local church. You know yep. the people there, you get connectivity to the, yep to the other leaders. All right, so now let me keep drilling you with questions. There's one verse in the Bible that says you can be worse than an unbeliever. Yeah. Do you know that verse? I do. First, can you tell it that? that, that? Yeah, first, first Timothy 5, and it's talking about the piety of, of, a, of a person who's trusted Christ. One of the ways we show our godliness is by caring for widows, caring for our moms and dads as they age. And you know, when you come into the world, you're under the authority of your parents. And then as you age, you become peers. And then as, we, as mom and dad get older, you become more and more the leader of, of, that, of that family. And, and even today, when I get done with this, I'm going to a meeting to help care for Grandpa Bill. Hmm. And uh, he's, he's a guy we adopted. God did amazing work in him and, his, him and his wife's life. They trusted Christ. He became the best deacon we ever had. But because of the, 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 the brokenness in their family, we just adopted him and, and we take care of him. And, it, and it's complicated, it's hard. But it says this in the scriptures, that if you do not take care, in First Timothy 5, if you do not take care of, of your family members, you are worse than an unbeliever. Right. Right. So you better plan. It's hard work. Yeah. But so take care of godly. your parents. Take care yeah. of your children. If, if you send your mother to church to get money because you won't give it to her, you are worse than an unbeliever. unbeliever. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a powerful yeah. verse. So I'll tell you, I, yeah. I read that verse. Now, you know, Jared and I got married when we just like gave all of our money away. And, and, and one day I was preaching through 1 Timothy. I got to that verse. And I was 38 years old. And I said, I am not planning for Jera. Statistically, she's going to live longer than me. Probably. I yeah. need to think through 
the 2,000 verses on money in the Bible, figure out how I should invest during the days in which we're living to honor the Lord Jesus Christ and take care of her. Because if I don't plan right now to take care of her, then I am acting like an unbeliever in that process. Now, it's a little preemptive strike, but the principle, so I believe, is does there. that mean you should like have life insurance? Is that what you mean? Yeah. If, okay. you're, if, you're, if you're a young couple, you're 20 years old, and you got a baby, I want to say yep. to the young guys, yep. you should have life insurance because if you die, you're, there's going to be a transition time. Your wife's going to need that. I had, okay. a, I had an old pastor tell me that when we first started. I was like, oh, I'm not going to die. He's like, young man, you got a responsibility to your wife and this new baby. That was really important. There Good you words. go. There you go. All right. Uh, next uh, thing. I, we talked about this before the camera started rolling, but there's a verse that I have to force myself to pray. And we talked about that verse. You want to read us that? It's from Proverbs 30. Yeah, it's an amazing verse. It says this. Two things I ask of you, God. of thee, God, uh, do not refuse me before I die. Keep deception and liars far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Think about that, praying. God, don't give me poverty. Don't let me be totally poor. Don't give me a bunch of riches. Uh, feed me with the food that is my portion. That's the area of contentment. Lest I become full and deny thee and say, where is the Lord? That's the danger the idol of money. I don't need God. Goes on, or lest I be in want and steal and profane the name of my God. That's a powerful verse. So have you ever prayed, Mark, Lord, don't make me poor. I think we all pray that. And Lord, don't make me rich. Do you ever pray that? You know what I, you know what I <laughs> it's pray? It's in the Bible. What I pray is, and I tell my kids this, if you're not called to preach, then I want you to make as much money as you possibly can and give as much money Amen. as you can in advancement of the Amen. gospel. Amen. Um, John Wesley taught that principle. Yes. But here's the second thing I pray for me, my kids, and all my friends, is God, you know the, the limits that we can handle with money. I've been around, I've been, I've been preaching for 34 years, preached my first sermon at 16, uh, 41 years ago. I've seen thousands and thousands of people, and I've seen them go you know, from uh, you know, maybe not having many resources to be having lots of resources and their hearts drift, just like this passage says. So Lord, don't give us too much. You know where the limit is. Give us up until that limit because we always want to honor you first. You're way more, God's way more important than mine. I, I, wanna, I want John Wesley, founder of the Methodist Church in the 1700s, three points. Earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Yeah. There was an old preacher that was preaching that and earn all you can, the old farmer. Amen. Save all you can, amen. Give all you can. Silence. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all right. Some things never change. That was, that was true 300, 400 years ago. It's still true today. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I would encourage everybody. What is that? Psalm 30? Proverbs 30. Proverbs, Proverbs 30, verse 7 through 9. I yes. encourage you. Proverbs chapter 30, 7 through 9. Force yourself to get your Bible open and to pray that prayer periodically. Yeah. Okay. And especially if God is blessing and your, and your net worth is increasing. Um, and I've been there with lots of friends. I, I mean, I help people manage their, their money in the, when they're hundreds of millions of dollars and people who have nothing. Could you and send them to our TV show? Well, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> See, you know there, how to do this. There, I don't. There, but there, anyway, there are, there's a lot of people that love you and a lot of people that <laughs> support you. You know that. Yeah. Um, uh, but the bottom line is this. There are, there, there's, a, there's a ceiling that you can handle. God, don't let me get above that ceiling because you're way more important. And keep, so we pray for that. Keep the priorities right. Yeah, yeah. Um, then, uh, is, true or false, Mark, the Bible says money is the root of all evil. Is that true or false? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it says that. First Timothy chapter 6. No, it doesn't. Well, it says let me, the yeah. love of money ba -da -ba. is the there root you of go. all kinds of evil. Yeah. And that goes back to what we're talking about. Yeah. If I love money more than I love God, then I will have unrestrained, and I, I, I literally meet people with unlimited resources from a human perspective. Yeah. I mean, I've had people say, I can buy anything I want. I can go right now down and buy a new Ferrari. Right, yeah. And, and, and when they do that, or when they have those resources, unless they have a lot of grace, a lot of love for Jesus, it will lead them to all sorts of carnality. Right. You think, you think about it, the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, First Timothy 6. And it says, it goes on from there and it says, and some having loved it have, have gone shipwrecked. Yes. And so history is yeah. filled with that. Yeah, yeah. Right? So don't, don't love money, love Jesus. And you know, I, I, we talk about giving joyfully, living simply. Johnny Carson, I remember, years ago, who had a gazillion dollars. Yeah. This was when $100 was a lot of money. Right. Johnny Carson said, 
I still can't spend $100 for a pair of shoes. I like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, why don't we just yeah. live simple lives as Christians yeah. and give buckets to missions? You know, I, I, I have, I, I'm not wealthy, but I have a, a couple friends that are quite wealthy, and they're Christian people. Yeah. And I think, do you really need a third BMW? Yeah. You know, you, you know I help people, again, manage their resources, especially as, as, their, as their net worth increases, because it takes more energy to do that well. But when you're, when you're dealing with finances and laying that out, there should be not only financial goals. So for example, at 38, I said, Lord, what will Jared need when I'm gone? And so I, I, we, we looked at, this is about how much you need. So, okay, then Social Security, and then savings, and 403B, and then if we invest in bought a rental, and that would create income. And okay, so then we started laying this out. But when we did that, so we have financial goals. God, would you help us be, work with integrity, work hard as unto you. I just want to take care of Jarrah. Um, there's a verse in Proverbs that says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's That's children. That's right. Yeah. And that verse is really important as we see the American dream being destroyed literally yeah. before our eyes. Because if you're in a foreign country, there is the rich and there is the poor. And the only, the only way that you have a chance to move forward is having an egg nest somewhere along the line that someone, grandfather or someone, grandmother's prepared. But the, in that net worth goals, you should have spiritual goals. God, help us to start so many churches. Help us to train so many pastors. Help yeah. us to care for so many orphans. Good. Help us to save so many babies. That's good. And, and I've just found that to be the great balancing thing. So I don't love money right. more than God. We love God. Wonderful. Good. Yeah. Well, listen, we just got a minute and a half. Uh, Mark has written a book called The Man Code, Mark Henry. He preaches. And, and, and what's your website? Yeah, Mar MarkHenryMinistries.com. Mark Henry Ministries, if we could put that up, MarkHenryMinistries.com if you want more information on this. And we just got a minute left, but would you just pray for the people that are watching our program that God will help them with all this? Mark, go ahead. Father, we're thankful for our friends who have joined us. And God, we pray that the words that we've shared, the scriptures that we've shared would resonate in their hearts. Yeah. And that God, you would give them grace and wisdom to manage that two to four million dollars they're going to have in their life. Mm -hmm. as being American citizens, at least that's, that's in America. And God, we pray that they'd manage it for your glory yeah. and that they'd store up a good treasure in heaven, they'd meet yeah. their own needs, they'd be able yeah. to share yes. and bless others. In Jesus' name. Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Well, thank you, Mark, yeah, so much. And everybody, just we want to just thank you because your prayers and your giving is what keeps us on the air. We used to be just on in Minneapolis. Yeah. We're on all over the country now because of people that are, God. that are very generous and they want to see our ministry uh, succeed. So just I want to thank you that, that are donating and, and praying for our ministry. Uh, Mark, uh, for Mark's ministry too, it sounds like you know they're starting churches and helping overseas. So those are the people I want to give my money to. Not somebody who's wanting you to buy a jet for him so he can Absolutely. Preach and, you know, c come on, please. So just be faithful, and we'll see you next time on The Pastor's Study. Thank you for watching The Pastor's Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write The Pastor's Study. P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.